Scripture today is going to come out of Matthew chapter 6. Some of you know it as the Lord's Prayer. The heading here today says the model prayer, and I am reading out of the New King James Version for the most part today. Um, there's not a huge, huge difference, but there's, there's a couple words I wanted today, so that's, that's where we're at. Uh, so we're going to start in chapter, er, chapter 6, verses 5 to 15 this morning. It says, And when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither Will your Father forgive your trespasses? Let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, that, that you give us this model. Father, help us to realize today and, in, 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 and even in the next week as we won't get through it today, Father, why we have it. What it stands for, Lord, it's more than just something we read every week. It's more than just, just, just some repetition. Lord, help us, help us to dive into it, Lord, and to understand it. Lord, and to apply it to our hearts and to our lives, Lord. I thank you for this in advance today, Lord. I ask you to help me to speak clearly and boldly for you this morning. Father, I feel your presence upon us this morning, and I am grateful for it. Lord, and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's where we are today. We're keeping with our theme of prayer here. And the more I prayed about this and the more I thought about it, the more I realized how much we as a church need this and how much we as individuals need this in our lives. Prayer, that is. Not just me talking, but we need prayer. <laughs> Prayer is the key to unlocking the many blessings of our God, the power and the protection of God, and the overwhelming love of God. It is, it is vital to our relationship with Him. It's, it's vital to our sanity and our relationship with each other, for that matter. But now knowing that, this week we're going to be looking at probably what is the most repeated and recited prayer ever since Jesus was with us here on this earth. That being said, are we getting out of it what we are meant to get out? Are we gleaning from this prayer what we're supposed to? Does it mean anything to us other than something we recite? Other than something we argue with denominations over whether we use the word debtors or trespasses? There's so much more to this prayer. So we're going to see what we can glean out of that today and, and next week. Because we're not going to get as far into it as I wanted this week. But that's okay. The Lord has his own plans. And so we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer. And we'll hopefully when we're done, this, we'll realize how this can serve as a reminder of what our prayer life can and should be. So with that, I want to look at our scriptures from this morning. Let's look at verses 5 to 8. We're going to start there this morning. It says, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. 
Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. It's interesting, Jesus prefaces the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, with a warning and with instruction. He says, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. And out, we hate that word. That hurts when we hear the word hypocrites. No one likes it. But then again, God has no use for the boastful and the selfish. Jesus continues, truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. He's referring to the Pharisees who would go to, go to great lengths to be sure to pray at a set time throughout the day. But not just that, to, to pray in a place where somebody was sure to see them pray. Or somebody was sure to hear them praying and hear this, this, these big, beautiful words and, and the, these elegant prayers and things. So that, so that when they did, they would think, wow, well, God must love that person. They must be quite a holy man. Just, just listen to them. Look at how faithful they are with their time of prayer. They weren't doing this to impress God. They were doing this to impress those who were watching. Now, do we pray a lot of times? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. What Jesus is condemning is not public prayer, but rather self-serving prayer. As I said, they weren't doing this for the Lord's glory. They were doing it for theirs. There are times for public prayer, for, for abrupt out-of-the-blue prayer. But that is to be the product of the leading of the Holy Spirit. There are times when you are in a group of believers sharing with one another and the Spirit tells you that person needs to be prayed for like right now. The Lord wants to tell that person, I know their pains. I know their struggles. I know what they're dealing with. And I'm going to use you to show them that I know. You see, that person needs to know that I know and you're the one that's going to show them. You're the one I'm going to use. And it might not be just a prayer. It might be an overwhelming urge to, to shout amen or to give praise to God. This usually comes out of, out of joy, out of an experience where there's, there's no other option but to give thanks to God for something that you just witnessed. Or some prayer that you just realized was answered. Again, there are times like what we have right here this morning that, that myself or another leader... It, Lifts up a prayer out loud in front of everyone. Not for our benefit. We don't do, I don't stand up here for my benefit. But we do this on behalf of those here, on behalf of those who cannot be here. We're interceding for you, for, for those, as I said, that, that can't be with us this morning. Just as the Father lets Jesus intercede for us. We just always have to keep in mind that it is for that purpose. It is for the glory of God, for the working of God, for the accomplishing of his purpose and his will, and not for ours. Now that being said, what the Lord wants from us, what Jesus was trying to explain, is that prayer is an intimate part of our relationship with God. We are talking to a being. We're not just talking to the wall. We're not just throwing up words and hoping somebody hears it. We are talking to God. We are talking not to a picture, not to an idea. God is real and he hears you and he wants to communicate with you. And he does that through prayer. We communicate with him through prayer. Verses 6 through 8 said, When you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Think about this. What do you do when you want to have an intimate conversation with your best friend? Or a counselor, if any of you have ever been to a counselor, or maybe you've got this, that, that one person that you sit down with, when you've got a pro problem, when you've got trouble, you have a person you go to. What do you do? You go to a quiet place. You get to a private place. Because what you're discussing, you probably don't want everybody to know about. Right? 
It's, it's no different with God. He wants that alone time with you. Not just so you can talk to him, but so he can talk to you. That one-on-one -on -one conversation. He wants to have that serious conversation. Just like you want to have with a best friend or with a spouse or with a counselor or whatever. God wants to have that with you. And we make time for those others, so we need to make time for it with God. Now, I know some of you are looking at me this morning and saying... <laughs> Okay, you find five minutes of quiet time in my day, and then we'll figure that out. And that is a problem today. We're all busy, and I understand that. We're all busy. That is a real issue. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I said we, we even pay to keep ourselves occupied, to keep ourselves busy. And that is an issue, I have no doubt. But let me ask you a couple questions. Do you feel like God is absent in your life? Like, like you don't see him working anymore. Like you just can't hear the voice of the Spirit anymore. And the second question. Do you want to hear it? Do you fear what God might say? What he might convict you of in your heart? Or are you longing to hear what he wants to tell you? I ask the second question because the first question is the condition of far too many of us. We are not hearing the Holy Spirit in our lives anymore. We're not feeling Him lead anymore. For some of you, it's recently. For some of you, it's been a long time since you've heard the Spirit. And because of that, our lamps are starting to grow dim. There are two big reasons for this. And that goes more towards our second question. The first one, you really don't have a moment of peace in your day, a moment of privacy. I think of moms more with this one. It's not, I'm not saying that dads aren't incredibly busy because some of you are. And I'm sure both fit into this mold as well. But you really don't have a spare minute. I'm not saying that you don't pray. I've no doubt that you do and that God hears you. But you can't get that opportunity to get along with God, that, that quiet place where you can have an actual conversation. Instead, we, we, we find ourselves just shooting out those little arrow prayers all day long. We pour out our heart to Him in that way because we can't get that quiet time to really focus and to really listen. Your prayers are in the car or in the shower while you're making lunches with the kids, hugging your legs and you're dragging them around the house. You're putting up your prayers between the demands of children and spouses and co-workers and bosses. If that's you this morning, you're not alone. And it takes help to get that alone time. And that means spouses and children. We need to be aware of what our loved ones are dealing with or what they're experiencing and just how busy they are. You say, man, how do you? You all right? You need to chill a little bit. Well, we need to do more to say that. That might get you in trouble. We need to realize just how busy they are, how much they're dealing with. We need to help provide them that me time, better yet, that me and God time. For you English people, it's, it's God and I time. But... We need to help provide that. That might mean 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of alone time when your spouse comes home and in the door from work, no homework questions, no venting about how your day was. And when they're still trying to separate their work and, and, and home stuff and in between and, 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 and nothing's going yet. There's no peace. Well, we can provide that. Maybe it's getting the kids up in the morning and getting them functioning so your spouse can have a prayer time. Or even just a shower in peace. Maybe it's putting kids to bed and washing the dishes so they can have a moment of peace and quiet. Whatever it is, get creative. Think outside the box. And this isn't just for spouses. Think about the single mother down the road that's got two or three kids. You think she has a moment to pray? Say, hey, can I play with your kids in the sandbox? Can, we, can I watch a movie with them? Can I do something so you can, so you can have them in it? Think about that. Then there's the other end of the spectrum. I said there was two reasons. 
There are those who are busy because they can't get a minute. Because there's so much in their lives. And then there are those who choose to be busy. And this is too many of us. We remain busy and unable to get that coveted quiet time. Unable. Not because we can't, but because deep down, there's a few things we don't want. We don't want to come before the throne of God and tell Him what we've been doing, though He knows. Because we know that once we do, once we get quiet, He's going to convict us of that. He's going to say, this is what you've been doing. You know it's not right, and I know it's not right. But we don't want to hear that. We don't want to feel that conviction of the Holy Spirit, so we keep ourselves busy. And then we use the excuse, I'm just too busy. This is an issue that has to be dealt with as well. And that comes, the, the way to deal with that is deciding where God is in our priorities in life. <coughs> Where we put him in our lives. I heard it said well the other day. That, that many of us Christians, we, we take Jesus and we shove him in the trunk of our car. We get to church, we yank him out, wipe the dust off him, take him to church, and when we're done, we shove him back in the trunk and we say, we'll see you next week. And as a result of that, that's about all we hear of the leading of the Spirit. That's about all we hear of Jesus for the week. Is that one hour... When we're here. If that is where we're placing Jesus in our lives, then that's all we're going to hear from. If we aren't hearing the voices of the Holy Spirit, we're going to hear the voices of another spirit. And that one really has no interest in your well-being, but rather in your self-destruction. He is watching with a smile on his face as you shove Jesus back in the trunk. We have to make a choice of which voice we want to hear, of what spirit we want to make time for in our lives. It really is a life or death decision. Verse 6 says, When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. What is done in secret. That, take that moment. However we have to do it, take a moment and get in that quiet place. That might mean leaving your house. It might mean finding a quiet spot that nobody else knows about. For me, it's coming in here during the week when nobody else is here. There's not a sound to worry about. There's, there's no television. There's no phone. There's nothing. We have to find that quiet place. And then we just talk to him. Don't think, it's, it talks about not, not babbling on like the pagans do. We sometimes we think we have to pray a certain way so that he'll hear us. It says, do not be like that. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. I've said this before and I'll say it several times. Though he knows what you need, he still wants to hear it from you. Think about it this way, those of you who are parents. Which one of you don't want your child, say you have a wayward child, a child who's struggling with something, and it could be anything. How many of you would not want him to come to you and to tell you what he's dealing with? To tell you, I need help. You know he needs it. You know what he needs. But you want him to come to you or her and tell you. To ask you for help. I don't, I'm not a psychologist. I don't understand it. But part of the healing is, that is needed is to come out and say what the problem is. We have to be able to say it ourselves. After all, if we can't say it out loud, we're probably not ready to receive the help yet. We're not ready to humble ourselves and let him take over. We have to be able to put it out there. And you know what? That, I've had this discussion with a few people. And that, you know what? That might be a loud conversation between you and God. It might be an angry conversation on your part. And that's okay. He wants you to talk to him as a father. And we're, we're going to get to that part in a little bit. 
But don't think that you've got to be the, this little mouse on the floor who whispers to God. He wants to know how you feel and why you feel it. And then he can help you. Jesus moves on to what we call the Lord's Prayer. As I said, in some of your Bibles, it's going to say the model prayer. That's probably a better name for it. For this prayer. Because that's what it's meant to be. A model of, of, of what we pray about when we're praying. Why we pray like we do. And to who we're praying to. It's so that we don't get distracted. That's no reason he wants us in a quiet place. Because any of you know, you try to pray at home with kids running around, with the television on pretty soon, your eyes are open, you're looking around like, oh, yeah, there's that. You, you can't get that alone and quiet time with God. That's why he says to go in a quiet place. Now, this is a model, like I said, Jesus said in the scriptures, in this manner, therefore pray. In this manner. Meaning keeping these things in the forefront of your mind when you pray. Do this so you won't be distracted. There, there is nothing more the devil would love than to interrupt your time of prayer. To keep you from concentrating on your time with God. Jesus knew this. So he left us this model. Think about it. How many times do we see in the Bible when Jesus prays, he leaves. He goes out in the middle of nowhere where there is nobody to bother him, and there he prays. He didn't pray with a room full of people with, or with the, with the 5,000 people needing to be fed. He went off into the night in the dark and prayed for a long time. He knew it was important. Now, we want to look into the, the Lord's Prayer. I told you that's what we were doing. We're not going to get very far into it, but I wanted this pre to prepare our mindset for it. And the very first couple lines is what we're going to read, and, and it's going to give us something to chew on for the week, and it goes well with, his, with their song this morning. So I want to read just the beginning, a very bit of verse 9. It says, In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed, be your name. Our Father. Have you ever given a lot of thought to why we often start our prayers this way? I mean, it, usually it, any prayer is just Father. That's how we start. Why? Not just because that's what we see written in the scriptures. Not just because that's what we hear Jesus do. It's more than that. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, if you have put your faith in Him you have, and you have become sons and daughters of God, children of God adopted into the family, that's who He is to you. That's who He wants to be to you. That's who He longs to be to you. For some of us, that's been a hard thing to grasp. It was for me. That's who He is. Some of us didn't have an ideal father figure. Some of us didn't have one at all. But I can tell you this, unlike a fallible, prone to sin human being, your Father in Heaven is a perfect Father. A Father who will never leave you, never forsake you. He only ever has your best interest in mind. Your well-being in mind because He is a just Father, a fair Father, and He loves you with an unending love. That's the kind of love that none of, none of us, no matter how good our fathers on earth are, we all fail at times. But, G but God will not do that. He will never leave us. He will never let us down. Even if you don't know Him yet, even if you don't have a relationship with Him, He still loves you. He's longing for you to come to Him. He's right there. Think about this. We put, our, we, we put so much stock, and I think this is why it's hard for us to understand this, to understand a father, a perfect father concept, because we put so much stock in that, in the men in our lives, as we should, but they let us down. Think about that. Our, our, our fathers have let us down in cases. Our husbands let us down. People let us down, and that's because we put them on too high of a pedestal in the first place. But God cannot let you down. God cannot not love you. We can come before Him with our guard down. 
We can come before him with the expectation and the desire to feel loved and to be heard. Because he will not disappoint us. He will not ever not love us. I want to stop there for this week. Because I want you to think about that as we go in to the prayers. The rest of that prayer. Because there's so much more. Just that, that little bit of our Father says a lot about who God is and who we see him as. Who he wants to be for us. Their song said, who will love me for me. Well, that's him. But I want you to think and consider a few things this week. Have I been avoiding the one whom I need most? The Father, I have been missing the God who loves me more than words can express. Have I been longing to hear the voice of of God in my life, but afraid to hear what he might say. Think about that this week. Think about who he is in our lives. Who do we see him as? Do we see him as we should? Can we let our guard down and say, Father, that's who you are to me. Because that's who he wants to be. Go from here today knowing that the Father hears you. Knowing that he knows your needs, that he wants a deeper relationship with you as any, any parent does. You are his sons and daughters. Give him that opportunity today, this very day before you leave, say, Lord, I'm yours. I'm your child, Lord, and you are my father. Father, help me understand your love. Help me feel it today, Lord, and every day. Let's close the word of prayer today. Father, Lord, that's who you are to us. That's, as I said, who you long to be. Help us to accept that, Lord. To, to, to put out of our minds the notions of what, what an earthly father is, Lord, because we can't compare. Father, humans will let us down, but you will not. So, Father, I pray here this morning that each individual here, Lord, would accept you as the perfect father. Lord, the ones whose love is perfect, whose justice is perfect. Father, be with us today as, as we continue in our service with our communion this morning, Lord. And we remember just how much you love us by what Jesus did, what he was willing to do so that we could come before you, so that we could be children of the Most High God. Thank you for that this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.